Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about this right here, my Glock 19X, which surprisingly I've never really done too much about this, um, specifically talking about it and telling you guys what I have on it and how I run it. But first, before we get into that, I want to give a shout out to a couple of the supporters of the channel that make the channel happen. Infinity Targets, they provide an awesome product for the shooting community. Um, if you're one of those people that's always shooting at trash and dirtying up the range, don't be that guy. Pick up some Infinity Targets. They're great for the environment. They're great for shooting and training and zeroing and getting good data while still having something that you can use over and over again. I probably shot mine a couple hundred, if not a couple thousand times each of my targets. Um, secondly, True Shot Ammo. One of the biggest things, of course, about making content like this is ammo is always going to be something you're gonna need. It's in supply. And True Shot has been generous to supply a lot of ammo for a lot of the shooting content that we've been doing here. So be sure to check them out. We've actually been shooting uh, MagTech 9mm in this gun, and if you see any of the other 9mm guns I've been running, chances are it's MagTech from True Shot Ammo. So be sure to check that out. But without further ado, let's get into the gun. So the gun, as you can see, is a Glock 19X. I've actually had this since 2019, 2018, and it was in a slightly different configuration. Didn't have the optic. It was very plain, if you will, back then. Even had a completely new frame. Um, so I talked to Josh, Juliet Tango Customs, when I came out here to Arizona. I was like, you know what? I really want to redo my gun from the ground up. So he got a new factory frame from Glock, re-stippled it, and it's beautiful. The grip is fantastic. Get a great purchase on the gun. The, just the radiusing that he does here and like especially the like gas pedal or shelf right here is really well done. I feel I can get a, a way better grip on this than I had before and then additionally even better than of course an OEM frame. Uh, a couple of the other things that I added to the gun of course was the Aimpoint Acro. That was kind of an interesting journey and in transitioning going from shooting iron sights to red dot because when I shoot iron sights for handgun I usually use my left eye. Um, when I shoot with a red dot, I had to transition to shooting right eye. So I know there's like the whole left eye, cross eye dominant type deal or whatever. But for me, it's like if I'm using a red dot, the dot is clear with the right eye, blurry with the left. So I just kind of had to force myself to cross over. So that was kind of an interesting journey relearning that. Uh, but I've really been enjoying running the Aimpoint Acro P2 on this gun and mine's directly cut into the slide, which is a lot better than typically using an MOS plate. Uh, additionally, for cutting down on recoil and um, just making the gun a lot more shootable, if you will, the Radiant Ramjet Afterburner Combo. Now, when this came out, I was like, wow, they're really saying it's like 45 like percent decrease in recoil, increase in controllability. I was like, that's a big claim. Let's try it out. And I've definitely noticed a huge increase in controllability, especially when you're doing rapid fire with the gun. It is definitely way better. Um, and one thing too is if you run it in a holster, you'll probably end up running it in a Glock 17 holster because it's adding length onto the gun. So just be cognizant of that when you're going for an outside the waistband holster, your 19 holster will technically be too short because you're adding length to the gun, basically giving it Glock 17 length, but obviously with reduced recoil. A couple other things I added to the gun were the Cagwork slide release. Honestly, if you buy a Glock stock, the first thing I would probably do is change out the slide release because the slide release on a stock Glock is pretty bad. It's terrible, but it's ambidextrous, makes reloading and just manipulating the gun a lot easier. And last but not least, the agency trigger. Um, the agency trigger in this gun is far, far superior to your standard Glock trigger unless you really, really break a Glock trigger in. But I mean, even then it's like, for me, using the agency trigger, the gun doesn't move. It's it's really great and the reset on it is very crisp. So that's kind of how I have it set. Of course, I got an X300 for low light. Obviously, we're not shooting in low light right now, but um, this is more or less how I have it set up. It's I wanted something that was kind of like a fancy duty gun, but not something so super sexy that it had all this unnecessary stuff on it. So I kind of kept mine simple, but gave it all functional accessories or upgrades. So if you're looking to upgrade your Glock 19 and you don't really need a lot of the crazy, super fancy stuff, this is just a kind of a, a bunch of accessories and things that I've done to my gun to increase the performance without making it like a gamey kind of gun. It's very, very duty ready, utilitarian, rough, ready to go. Um, all the parts on it are very reliable. Most, obviously most of the internals are pretty much stock except the trigger and the slide release. Um, and then yeah, changing the barrel. So. 
Uh, but yeah, no, the gun's been running great. I've shot a couple thousand rounds in this thing and I've been enjoying it ever since. So if you guys want to get a upgraded like setup like this, I'll put the parts list in the description below so you guys can find all that stuff and get, yeah, get it in your gun. Um, but yeah, so that's my main, I guess you say range daily driver, if you will. So be sure to check it out. Thank you guys for watching. And um, if there's anything I want to leave you with, it's if you're a real gun guy, go ahead and try Airsoft. If you're a Airsoft guy, go ahead and try real guns. Because I feel like whether you're on one side or the other, if you haven't seen what's going on on the other camp, you're kind of missing out. You know, like uh, if you're in the Airsoft side, you're getting a lot of the force and force experience, but you're missing out on a lot of the fundamentals from the real steel side. If you're doing the real steel stuff, you're getting all the fundamentals, but you are kind of missing a little bit of that human factor of force on force that you get with airsoft. And of course, you know, airsoft can kind of game stuff a little bit. So just make sure when you go into it with a training mindset or, or just have fun, that you are aware of some things that are kind of gameable or that you can cheat with a little bit. But get that experience, have a more holistic training, I guess, um, like view on training. Just you know, don't do just one thing, try a little bit of everything and then piece those things together and you'll have a more complete, well-rounded, uh, skill set, if you will, of a, of a bunch of skill sets. So that way your knowledge is no, not narrow and deep, but wide and, you know, reasonably deep. So that way you're not like wide and shallow, right? So get that skill, go out there, keep training, and keep supporting Second Amendment. This is Spartan 117GW. I'll see you guys next time.